Welcome back, everybody. Rudy, Alpha Investments. Give me a call. Let's talk about pricing. Bennett, I appreciate everything, sir. Thank you very much for the cards and the deal and the uh, the kindness. Very uh, very good gentleman and a scholar over here. Um, this guy actually, uh, when he he actually mailed me his collection, he actually itemized everything. And um, I guess he's going for maybe at one point in time he was a collector or a player of unlimited cards. So I thought this was interesting because I was going through the unlimited cards. And the, kind of the way I usually do it is I kind of go through and just kind of zip through just to make sure that nothing uh, crazy. Good lord, I'm already hitting the camera and giving you guys headaches? That didn't take long. So I usually kind of just zip through real quick and make sure there's nothing weird hiding in these things. Hey look, a white knight. Like I said, you got commons, uncommons. Oh, there's a little fireball, a little warlord action. You know, nothing crazy, but again, don't underestimate. I mean, they're both cards. There's not really a lot of value, but there's a lot of people out there who terror. Juggernaut. Ah, uh, Minotaur. There's a lot of people out there that actually are kind of set collectors. Remember, back in the day, that was a thing. I don't know if you guys remember this. Nowadays, nobody collects a set of magic. If a set of Hour of Devastation comes out, or Iconic Masters comes out, or Amonkhet, nobody... Oh, God, I love that card. Look at that beautiful picture. Nobody collects full sets anymore. Well, back in this era, in the 93, 94, 95, and the 6, and the 7 range, there was a lot of people that wanted full sets of all these magic cards. So, don't underestimate how many people will literally, you know, give you a buck a card on some of these older things, especially if they're missing them. Now, as you guys can see, these are not mint. Well, some are actually unplayed, but some actually have some dirt, and I would call these uh, a light play to a moderate play, depending on the particular example. So, but still, you always have to go through this crap. You never know. Like, stupid little common cards like this are very iconic. Uh -huh. Ironic word choice, right? Back in the day, because, you know, those were cards that were cut off on the Unlimited. They never got went to the, you know, 4th edition forward range. So, and again, these are all Unlimited, not revised. Bold colors, you can tell by the border thickness. And uh, that's about it. Like I said, nothing crazy in this batch. But again, you must always check to make sure that you're not going to miss anything weird going through some squirrely stuff. So, like I said, this guy literally... He, he sent me, the, I guess he had a bunch of booster packs of Unlimited and starter decks that him and his buddies played. He literally told me that he used to play, this was in a closet, he freaked out, he found it with his friend, and he said, dude, oh my god, it's worth money. And he's right. A couple thousand dollars later, he sent this to me, and uh, this is what we're buying. So, again, he had some regular good rares. Um, you know, the old mask is a big thing, the scepter, black vice uncommon, some good uncommon, some common staples up here. That, um, you know, not super high dollar value. They're not reserved list, been printed a million times. Fast Bond is Berserk. Now, Berserk's one of those funny examples. It's one of those cards that has been reprinted now. Uh, Conspiracy 2, Take the Crown, uh, from the Vault, and probably going to be some more reprints. But original Berserk artwork and original, this is one of those OG cards that actually does hold value no matter on the preprint. So, heads up on certain specific nostalgic cards. And of course, I mean, come on, there's no nothing funnier than people paying, you know, playing, you know, some sort of 1-1 one, one, and then, you know, putting giant growth and triple berserking it and ending the game. It's just absolutely hilarious. Okay, Fork, Classic Lightning Bolt, Granite, Brain Geyser, some little crap over here. Um, I want to go right into the fun stuff. He told me, and this is what really caught my attention, that he had literally a pack fresh Mox Jet. Now, the Mox Jet always gets me all tingly, but the fact it was a pack fresh is what really got my attention. So I got the card, and I'm looking at it, and I went, holy crap, this dude was not joking around. This guy literally has a pack fresh mock jet. So, is it really? Is it a gradable material? I don't know. I think we should check. I think we should take a look. So we want to really... Surface? Wow, that actually is very nice. Well, there's a little, the bottom's got a little nick there. See a little white at the bottom. Overall, wow, that is really nice. That is a very nice mox jet, you guys. Okay, so cards like that. So, anyways, back to the uh, fun part of this video. Anybody? No? Yeah. Okay, so anyways, like I was saying before, the other things that are important, like untimed volts. These are some of these cards a lot of people argue are significantly undervalued. You know, this is the power 10. Some people argue that the library is power 10, whatever. And then, of course, the unlimited duels, in infamous alternate, the original artwork for Plateau, and, of course, the C and everything. Those have been jumping pretty significantly lately. 
And honestly, I just think they were overdue for a jump. It's not really surprising to me. I want to zip over to one other thing. And this is something I think is important. When people send collections in, the archaeologists, slight play. Okay. Let's take a look, shall we? This is a lot of times where, you know, the, the problems and the prices and the negotiations get a little messy. Because And this gentleman was very easy going, very nice guy. I didn't have any problems, but I, I'm, I'm not sure that would... Uh, let, let's, let's zoom in here with you guys. Um, there we go. How's that? Can you guys see real good? I want to make sure you... I, I'm not sure that's light play. That's maybe a light play with a dog bite? Um, that's a full-blown dog bite action right here, you guys. See, you know, I can't, there's, there's no way. That's not slight play, home skillet, cheese, fries, corn, fritter, potato. That, that just, it's just not going to work, man. I mean, I, I appreciate it and everything, I know, but I, I'm not going to be, I'll give a couple dollars for it. I mean, it's still an archaeologist, it's still a cool card, and recently it went from like $20 to like 30 or 35 or something, and I've got... I don't know, 40 or 50 archaeologists or some crap like that. And it's, it's, it is reserved list. It's going to keep going up. Besides the dog bite in the corner, it is a nice card. But that was very important for me to point out with you guys. Because, like I said, those are the times that you run into issues with condition that sways the value of a collection. Now, imagine if that was this. You'd be talking about literally like a $1,000 swing almost, you know? I mean, you're, you're talking some huge numbers. And again, some other little things. You got Dr. Sushi, um, significantly undervalued reserved list card. It is a U3, so it's not a super rare U2 type printing on the print run for Antiquity. A little more common. Uh, and of course, uh, I haven't made any videos on it, but here we go. Transmutant Power Artifact. All right. I'm gonna, we're gonna jump on this for about one minute just because it's such a hot topic big deal lately. Okay. These are two of the hottest targeted reserved list buyout cards. And, you know, honestly, I'm surprised it took that long. You know, these both these cards are readily available for years for probably between $50 and maybe $70 unplayed. You know, PSA 10, BGS 9, 9, 5, 10 range. You're not 10 pristine, but 9, 5 range. And maybe 150 So keep in mind, there is a lot of these two cards out there. It's going to be very difficult to move the market and make the market sustain a higher price point on something with a higher print run like this. That's something I always warned about on the Mirage with the Lion's Eye Diamond buyout, some of the things. These cards are never going to go down. I mean, period. They were between $50, $60, $70 for years, and now they're maybe trending to $80 to $100 range. You know, but again, I don't expect it to go much higher in in the near term, mostly due to the supply being as large as it is. And, of course, usually, you know, I don't know who the people involved are in doing buyouts on cards like this and, of course, Transmute. But keep in mind, due to the print run being high, you know, when people when people all around the world see that Transmute goes to maybe, let's say it doubles from 60 to 120, a lot of those people are going to take their 5, 10, 20 Transmutes and they're going to buy list them or they're going to sell them on eBay and they're going to cash it in. And you're going to have another infuse and a nice injection of supply back into the market, and the market is probably going to snub its nose saying, I'm not paying that higher price, hardy, har, har. You know, you know, come on, guys. I got to do the pirate noise. I mean, Ixalan Pirates. I got to try to fit in with all the cool kids. You know, I want my channel to grow above a 1,000 subscribers one day. So anyways, you know, that's, that's my take on the Transmute and the Power Artifact. Phenomenal cards. These cards in five years from now, I would, you know, if these were $500 a card, I would say, yeah, I'm not really that surprised. And I would move on and go to Taco Bell. If these were still $100 a card in five years, I would actually be more surprised. But that's kind of the, let's put the bracket, the high-low variance. That, that's my opinion on them. Do I think they're going to keep skyrocketing right now? No, because the market's already pushed it. Everyone's readjusting. The buyers are, are you know getting pissed off with their little noses and saying, oh, I'm not paying this higher price. Oh, 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 oh. I, I know how it is. But time goes on. People adjust to the new normal, and uh, people eventually pay the higher price. And thanks for playing. I hope you enjoyed your stay. There'll be a gift bag next to your bathroom. Now, before we end the video, some miscellaneous crap over here. Things we want to point out. It's first, it's funny that a lot of these older cards are like the, these playable cards are in sleeves because it's just really funny how people evaluated, you know, creatures back in the day. It was always humorous to me. And Power Leech, I am very surprised this reserved list 9394 card that's always played in vintage is not a lot higher than like a dollar or two. I'm really surprised by that actually. 
Um, and then we have a Might Stone. Might Stone and Weak Stone are another one of these cards. You know, dog bite action on this card. So no real value because it's, you know, damaged, not heavy played. It's damaged people. But the point is, those are type of cards. These are not that great. You know, we're talking four colorless. It just, you know, flat out attack creatures get 1 0. You know, Weak Stone, tag creatures, you know, minus 1 0. It's really nothing exotic about it. But it is reserved list. It's very, it has an iconic feel, it has very distinctive art. Now, Fallen Empire cards. He, it looks like he bought a pack or two of Fallen Empires and just threw them in. I don't pay anything for this. I mean, I'll give you a hug. I'll maybe hold your hand in a park. Maybe one taco. But there's, there's just no value in that stuff. But I, I left it out because I wanted to point out on one thing. You know, there are cards in Fallen Empires that I actually do not believe are that bad of a card. Some cards are really cool looking in the art and everything, but it's just not a good card. If this card didn't come into play tapped, if this did not have that drawback, these cards and the valuation in the entire life cycle of Fallen Empires would be completely different. The fact that this land cycle has comes into play tapped wrecked all of these lands. If that wasn't there, it'd be a game changer for the entire set of Fallen Empires. And of course, people are going to comment and say, Rudy, then it'd just be broken, too powerful. You could just drop lands and, of course, sack all your lands and get double mana on turn five. I get it. I get it. But it would have been fun. Other thing, and there are some other weird little cards in these, like the fungus stuff and the... I mean, I never thought... I played with these cards in 94. I didn't think these cards were that bad. I thought one mana for a 1-1, one, one, and then every three turns, you pretty much get a bonus creature. It kind of multiplies itself. You know, you put four of these in the field. I thought it was a fun thing. That was just me. But I, again, overprinting and just non-weak power level cards really did... uh Really crushed Fallen Empires indefinitely. But the box prices are finally going up. They're actually pushing 200 a box now. Go figure, right? Okay, last but not least. Um, remember, uh, rever- reverse polarity is not reserved list. The Martyr, some people call Martyrs, you know, whatever you want to call it. These dudes, Mr. Uh, Mirror, black, white, red, purple, capes with red hair, black hair, whatever's going on there, bodyguard, I don't know. So these guys are reserved list. These are good dudes. Um, I find them attractive. These are dudes you want to fool around with. These guys are reserved list. It's not a phenomenal card, but again, it's reserved list, yada, yada, yada. Same thing with dampening field. Damping? Dampening? Or damping? Damping field. You know, I don't know. I think I'm up to, I don't know how many of these things. I keep pulling out of these collections and bulk and everything. And yeah, I mean, God, what am I up to over here? I think I have, I'll just add it. I'll go ahead and do it. Boop. You know, you just kind of keep whatever. The point is, you know, certain cards like that are never going to be worth a ton of money. But they're still reserved list, peeps. Uh, other little thing, keep an eye out, everybody, for these other miscellaneous cards happening. Like I was telling you guys about the weak stone. Sorry for the shaky camera there. I try to keep the camera real steady for everybody. Uh, the tomb has already been spiking. Again, I mean, you know, whatever. It's, I guess, first turn workshop. You could drop it and, you know, two, draw a card. You know, immediately. It's kind of got some dredge churning ability if you're into that kind of crap but wait i don't want to talk about mechanics people are like rudy doesn't play the game he's not supposed to know that um anyways weak stone you know same is this one of the dog bite cards no dog bite and a little bit of slight play action so that's actually sp see that that's actual sp you know it's only got a few nicks so the factories i want to tell people heads up on the factories with everything going up in value all of this type of stuff Antiquities as a whole as a set is going to become extremely expensive over the next 10, 20 years. The booster boxes of antiquities are going to be pushing 20,000 plus a box in the future. It's going to happen. Just lack of supply and the fact that every card in the set is going up, it's going to change the game. I'm telling everybody. So, factories, especially winter, severely underpriced. That's all. Urzas, these things, you know, plant mine tower. Honestly, I'm surprised these are still 50 cents a card. I'll be straightforward with everybody. I thought these should be oh, five dollars a card. I'm not really. I don't know. I, I just these these cards should not be 50 cents to a dollar. There, there's going to be a time. It's like strip mines. Strip mines, even though they reprinted in fourth edition, fourth edition, I, I don't see these cards staying cheap. So that's really all I have. Uh, that's the whole video. I wanted to share everything with everybody. This is the type of collection. Um, again, we get some other little... I guess we can flip through this real quick in case everybody's curious. Let's take a quick gander. A little golly gander there. You know, these are not reserved. This Atog. People love Atogs. Look at that dog bite in the corner again. Nothing really great. Ran. Oh, look, I, I think the blacksmith might be reserved list, but nobody seems to care. 
you know, Spears, Common, Ward, Engine, Pixies, that. Uh, uh, what was that? Re uh, reconstruction, Battering. Just a bunch of little nothingness going on here. That, whoa! Actually, that's a Shatterstorm. I think that's actually gone up recently. So sometimes you do get some weird crap. And that's really about it. That's, that's everything in the video. Um, final thing, make sure when you're buying collectors, do not mix up unlimited and revised cards. I'm telling you guys, that is a first-class ticket to losing money. The value of a, res a revised winner orb versus like an unlimited. If this was an unlimited winner orb, it would be worth a good amount of money. Revised cards are not. So heads up on that. The same card in, you know, Alpha Beta Unlimited versus Revised has a huge price swing. That is all I have. Rudy with Alpha Investments. Me and my fungus are going to head out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Questions, comments below. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this. I like showing collections. I like go through in cards and talking about it and having a conversation. It's like you guys get to join me and you get to kind of see how everything goes. So uh, Rudy with Alpha Investments. Heading out with my fungus. Among us. Because there's a fungus among... Oh, Jesus.